Hello and good evening and welcome to Wednesday night prayer meeting. We will be getting started in just a moment. I wanted to uh, make sure technology is working well uh, this evening, but thanks for joining me. And uh, just so you know, uh, if you want to get your Bible ready, we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, verse 7 through 16 tonight. Luke chapter 2, um, 7 through 16. So we'll be getting started here in just another moment or two. We're getting started here in just one more moment. <clears throat> Thanks for joining us this evening. Once again, we're going to be looking at, um, uh, tonight we're going to be looking at Luke chapter 2, verse 7 through 16. And so we'll be starting here in just one more moment. Okay, let's see here. It is 6.59. To me, that is all good. So um, we can go ahead and get started. My name is uh, Pastor Don Mast. I'm with Altoona First Southern Baptist Church, located at 903 North 4th Street in Altoona. And tonight is Wednesday night prayer meeting, and I'm glad that you're with me. I'm thankful that you're here this evening. And it's really a, a privilege to be able to serve the church and to serve the community and uh, to serve our Father. And so if, if you are new to Wednesday night prayer meeting, um, what I like to do is I, I like to keep it where we have a short lesson from the Word of God and then we pray together. And I'm here to challenge you. I'm here to get you thinking. And so I, I appreciate you uh, joining this evening. And so just a real quick announcement before we get started. If you haven't heard on local radio or through the news, or I think it's going to be in the Alton Mirror this week as well, um, we are going to have a festive morning coming up this Sunday at 1045 at Altoona First Southern Baptist Church. And what I mean by that is, the Altoona Community Band is going to be, uh, they're sending an ensemble, a smaller group. There's going to be about eight members. And they will be performing festive Christmas music to really kick off the, the holiday season. So that's this Sunday, December 10th at 1045 a.m., same time that we start church. And the event will be held right there at church, and uh, all are welcome to attend it's open to the public. You don't have to be a member of the church or anything like that. And I encourage you to bring a friend. And we're going to be celebrating and, and sharing some, some wonderful music from these talented individuals, these talented musicians from our local community. So if, if you will, I'm going to grab my Bible here. And we're going to take a look at Luke chapter 2. We're going to look at Luke chapter 2, verse 7 through 16. For a lot of you, this is going to be very familiar. Luke chapter 2, verse 7 through 16. And she brought forth a firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Now there were in the same country shepherds 
living out in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And behold, an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone all around them. And they were greatly afraid. And then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill towards men. And so it was when angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. And they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. Now when they had seen him, they made widely known the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all those who heard it marveled at those things which were told them by the shepherds. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word this evening. And so tonight, tonight, okay, let me back up here a little bit. I got ahead of myself. I have a prop this evening. Um, but I almost got ahead of myself. You know, it's it, it's that time of year. You know, we're talking about Christmas and, you know, all too often we see that, that, you know, while all of our eyes are turned towards Christmas, we realize that, you know, first of all, my personal opinion is just one voice here. But, you know, I'm convinced that Christmas has become a bit distorted in our world and in our culture. From its original intention, Christmas is almost unrecognizable today. It's all about Santa Claus and the gifts. And, you know, when you were a kid... It was too, but now it's so magnified with our society and, and culture. And so today there are, you know, ones who go so far into debt for gifts and it takes months and months and months to pay off that debt. And to be politically correct, we can't even say Merry Christmas anymore, right? And so, so let me declare to you that, that, that Christmas is about one thing and one thing only the birth of the Savior of the world. And so allow me to direct your attention. Allow me to direct your attention to the manger and to that little guy right there, the manger. You know, when we talk about the manger, you know, a manger, it's a, it's a box, it's a, it's a trough and a stable or a barn for which, you know, horses and cattle tend to eat and graze in there. And, you know, there are some 783,000 words in the King James Bible. And when we look at those 783,000 words, only three words, only three of those mention the manger. That box or trough that was found in the stable that night was an item that had total insignificance for many. The manger was so unimportant that it could easily be conceived. It, you know, it was built out of any leftover wood that was there and, you know, some maybe two by fours or two by sixes or two by twos. It really doesn't matter. Who cares what it looks like? It's just a manger, right? And if the truth were told, a stable could easily do without a manger altogether. If you designated a certain area just for like feeding, you know, you could effortlessly, effortlessly feed the donkeys and the cattle and the horses and, you know, right off the stable floor. And animals, they really don't care, right? And so, so nevertheless, on that night in a stable, there was an irrelevant and immaterial food trough. But on this night, the manger is going to be called upon 
for a brand new journey, a brand new adventure. This, this unimportant piece of staple furniture, stable furniture, was to be transformed into this worldly, into worldly acclaim because of this Christ child in this event. When baby Jesus was placed into a manger, into that manger, it forever transformed the world's perception of what the purpose of a manger is for. I don't care if it's August 19th or 100 degrees in the shade. When you hear the word manger, you don't think about animals. What do you think about? You think about that little guy right there, right? You think about the birth of Jesus. You think about our almighty Savior. And the addition of Jesus into that manger forever changed, you know, really the definitions of mangers, right? Ask most people what a manger is. And I sincerely doubt that you'll get a Webster's Dictionary definition of it. 99% of the time you're going to hear that it's a place where a newborn baby Jesus was laid. In other words, the addition of the Christ child completely changed the whole dynamics of a manger. Its definition and its purpose. And you're probably like, Don, why are you going on about mangers? Well, without Christ, one definition and purpose, right? With Christ, forever change. Isn't that the same about you and I? Without Christ, without Christ, I was nothing significant. The world perceived me as, as one with no power, no direction. I was definitely you know, defined by the world. And the only thing that, that I was considered any good for could be frustration, grief, those sorts of things. Not Webster's Dictionary, but Satan had defined me and others in this world according to his plans for us. But when I started to walk with Jesus, when we started to walk with Jesus, that personal relationship with Jesus, when we allowed him into our hearts, when we got baptized, right? When we got baptized, you can see right there, the baptismal t-shirt there. You know, we shed the insignificant, the weak, the powerless, all those definitions that the devil defined us by. What the world defined us by. And you know what happens when we have Jesus in us. We become significant, strong, and powerful. How could such a thing be? I mean, it was the addition of, of Christ into my life. Old things passed away. All things became new. The answer to your transformation is to simply add Jesus, just like they did with the manger. The, the, the way to conquer your weakness to sin is to add Jesus. You don't have to be, you know, dictated to by people's opinions or, 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 or their mentalities. You know, you just simply add Jesus. You don't ever again have to be bound by Satan's directives or decrees or, you know, pathways that he wants you to go. You just add Jesus. You simply need to add Jesus to your life and have your existence redefined. Your journey redefined. So tonight, right here, right now, your life can be renovated, reconstructed, and rebuilt, forever transformed. Just like that little manger right there. Forever transformed. So why can't it be that when people come in contact with you, that, you know, they can say, let me back up, let me think about this now. You want people to remember 
that, you know what, your life is different. You know what? They're going to say, hey, I remember your old life. He was constantly troubled. He was bound for bad things, bound by the powers of this world. But one day Jesus was added. And he was never the same. The addition of Jesus will redefine you if you allow him to do it. So when the glitz and the advertising of this season may tempt or distract us, we need to remember that Jesus is the reason for this season. Bringing us unimagined generosity, bringing us profound gifts. The Bible says the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him what? Emmanuel, which means God is with us. That's Matthew chapter 1, verse 23. So Jesus is God with us. And he brought us the gift of life in a world of death. He saves his people from their sins. When we believe in Jesus, our generosity unfolds. We tend to others' needs, and we joyfully provide for them as God provides for us. This is the manger story. This is God's story. So this Christmas, let us open our hearts and receive the gift of salvation. Let us thank God for his love and for his son, Jesus Christ. And let us share the gift with others by telling them the good news of the gospel. And tonight, if you don't have that personal relationship with Jesus, you can do that right now. With Jesus, you can experience a new joy, a new love, a new peace that you've never had or never felt before. The old life, the old guilt will be gone. He will wipe that slate clean forever. You're never going to have to look behind you. This is the most important step, the most important decision you're ever going to make in your life. And if you are ready to place your faith and your hope and, 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 and hope and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I ask you to sincerely pray this prayer with me right now. So I encourage you to bow your heads and pray with me. Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I know, Lord, that I need you in my life. I need your forgiveness. And Lord, I'm going to turn away from my sins. I'm going to turn away from all of those things that have been keeping me away from you. And I believe, Lord, that you died for my sins and I believe that you rose again. And I want to turn away from my sins and I invite you now to come into my heart and into my life and give me that purpose, that joy, redefine all of my life. I want to trust you and follow you as Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So Merry Christmas. That's the manger story. And so now I, I want to go ahead. And every Wednesday we, we pray together. And I encourage you to grab a pen and a piece of paper as we pray for those who need it. And, you know, this is a really tough time of year for a lot of folks. Whether it be loss, loneliness, or even, you know, right now, flu and sickness are really going around. And so a lot of folks need prayer. And so I just ask that you grab a pen and a paper as we turn to the Lord together. So will you pray with me this evening? Father, we place all of our worries in, our, in your hands, Lord. Lord, we thank you for the salvation you've given us in Jesus. And Lord, we just turn everything over to you. And, and we thank you for your loving kindness that never fails. I just ask that you strengthen us as we pray this evening and fill us with your peace. And we ask for your blessings tonight as we pray and we share our many burdens. And so, Father, we place our sick under your care and we humbly ask, you pour out your love, comfort, peace, and healing power, and God's speed for this healing to all of our church family and friends who are dealing with medical issues and sickness tonight. Give our sick and their family strength and, 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 and give them calm 
and hope while you work and you mend them, Lord. Tonight we lift, we lift up Jess Jensen. He just found out that, Lord, he has acute leukemia. And, Lord, he's going through his, his rounds of chemo, and he's also in need of a transplant, bone marrow transplant. And, Lord, we also lift up Peach and her, her son, her brother Woody. Lord, he's dealing with fighting prostate cancer. And we lift up Carrie Prusnak and, of course, Kevin. And, Lord, we just ask you to touch her back and heal her spine and her back. And we lift up Linda Fuller and her son, John, waiting MRA results. And, Lord, also uh, Audra, Linda's niece, is out of surgery and her lungs are in really bad shape, Lord, and permanently paralyzed as well from the waist down. And so we just lift her and that entire family up to you during this very, very difficult time. We lift up Scott Beck and his continued health issues, and we lift up Cindy Johnson, who has recovered from the flu, Lord. We just continue to uh, ask for God's speed and strength as she's continuing to recover. And tonight, Lord, we lift up Darlene Blount smeek who is dealing with um, uh, recovering from COVID, who is struggling with uh, severe chest issues, chest congestion, and Lord, tonight we also lift up Deb Stell and Vicki Snyder and their family. We lift up Carrie B., Edie Elizabeth Johnson Lowe and her family. Lord, we lift up the Rudisil family, John and Linda, and also Joe Biddle and his wife, Rachel, and their son, Joseph. And, and Lord, you know what's going on there. And Lord, we just lift up his son, Joshua, as he's... Uh, going to have surgery on his heels shortly. Our new church friend, Julie. Rose Murrow and her family and the McGee family, Warren and Holly and the kids. My cousin, Tina, and her husband, Jose and the kids. And Dean Branda and his wife. The Barry family, we lift them up to you, Ralph and Christine and the kids. And Pastor Paul and Cindy Johnson and their family and their kids and grandkids. And Lord, we just... Thank you for everything you're doing in April's life right now. And be with Aaron Bomeisel and Daquan and their entire family. Brother Anthony English and his wife Polly and Vincent Mukul. We lift up Vincent and his wife Lillian. And, and Lord, we just pray for Lorenzo right now who is recovering from, from being sick. And also we lift up Castro in Oakland and Cookie and Liz and Rob DeStefano and the entire DeStefano family. Dave and Linda. First Baptist Church of Seward, Pastor Rex, Pastor Rick Miller and their families. And Lord, we just ask that you bless them, Lord. We just ask that you help them. And Lord, we lift up Lawrence and Kayla Rissler and their family. Lord, tonight I lift up my wife, Angelina, my son Elliot and Becca and the entire Miller family in Texas. And of course, Lord, my mom and my dad. And we pray for fellow pastors in our community and and Lord, we just lift up our community. We lift up our neighborhoods around our church. And we lift up each and every family. And we pray for our missionaries in the United States and around our country and around the globe. Keep them safe as, with a hedge of protection as only you can, Lord. And tonight we take time to pray for the hurting nation of Israel and the innocent families being slaughtered and the young and old throughout the Middle East. And we pray for our nation and we pray for the government leaders and the military as a defend and protect our country, keep them safe. And Lord, this this country, this world is 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 hungering for a spiritual awakening. Lord, we just ask that, Lord, you just make that a priority, Lord, every single day that we look at you, we draw nearer to you, and we praise you, Lord, for all the 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 prayers that you've answered, Lord. And we just ask for healing and peace and lighten our burden. And be nearer to us during our time of weakness and pain. Lord, thank you for all the blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And so tonight, family, church friends, we learned about this little thing. We learned about the importance of the manger. We learned about how when you add Jesus... The whole definition of your life changes, just like the definition of that manger. And so I want to remind you before we go, 
to visit us this Sunday for a festive morning with Altoona Community Band performing. Our address is 903 North 4th Street. We start at 10.45 a.m. And it's going to be a festive, wonderful music time of fellowship. And if you're looking at year-end gifts, year-end donations, I encourage you to consider writing to us. 903 North 4th Street, Altoona, Pennsylvania, 16601. Our church, you know, if you if you enjoy our, our ministry and our message, I just ask that you consider giving at the end of the year to help us to grow, to help us to reach more. And be sure to visit our website, a1sbc.org, to learn more about us. Because, you know what, we're reaching the lost and we're equipping the saved. And it's our mission to to serve with the compassion of Christ and to minister with the transforming message, message of the gospel. And, you know, we really help folks through that personal relationship with Jesus through every season of life because it's, it can be difficult. And we do it without judging. We do it without, you know, criticizing. We do it with the Word of God. Strengthening your walk in faith. And it's all about reaching the lost and equipping the saved. Just like Jesus commanded us to do through the Great Commission in Matthew 28. So I hope you'll come and join us this Sunday for a wonderful band concert at our church. Altoona First Southern Baptist Church, 903 North 4th Street. Have a blessed evening. Merry Christmas. And thank you for listening tonight. God bless you. <laughs>